Okay, so welcome, welcome guys and girls to the webinar, um, Creating High Performance Athletes. So if you're watching this, you're gonna be seeing me refer down to here. It's because I'm gonna be reading the notes, uh, and reading the comments as they come through. So uh, welcome to everybody. This is being recorded in a video and an audio format. So just bear that in mind. Obviously, if I'm pausing, uh, please just bear with me. But welcome to everybody. Uh, I think I've been introduced to everybody so far. Um, I replied or replied to all of the emails that I've received and we're going to cover those topics. There are some areas where I've replied back specifically to those individuals um, about the topic that they wanted me to discuss. It's probably something better suited to a one-to-one -one as opposed to something to put out to the masses because uh, it's quite personable and I think there's more to it than that. So I'm not gonna cover those bits, but the areas that uh, were covered or were sent over, I've got some notes here, so I'm gonna to to be answering those questions as we go along, so welcome. So let's start then, who is here? What is your role, what is your job? What do you do? You can hear my dog in the background. So we've got a coach, yeah. More coach, parent, okay, so is that a parent for a, okay, you're answering, okay, yeah, so you're a parent to an athlete, son's an athlete, good, and yeah, yeah, I know you, yeah, welcome, so athletes, so we've got parents, athletes, and coaches. Right, so let's see what sports, what sport, a poker player, okay. Right, so a, right, on the video, you're, going to, you're only obviously gonna hear one side of the conversation, so apologies for the first bit. I'm gonna keep it in, I think it's important you understand the structure of these webinars. So we've got poker, rowing, tennis. Anyone else? Joe, I know you're a runner. We've got soccer. Soccer, we, yeah, in the UK, we call that, when, and in Europe, we call that football. Tennis, tennis again. Lacrosse. Okay, keep them coming. I'm gonna just refer back to those notes, this live stream, as I go through. Uh, so we never know really, I never know uh, with, the, with these webinars, uh, this is one of the earlier webinars that I'm going to be running within the 100 Nman brand, uh, specifically towards the coaching practice, although we have got a poker player here as well. Um, we, I've been dealing with people um, for many years now in a number of different areas. So predominantly within the weight loss, the business sector, uh, and I have dealt with some Olympians before. So that's where I've come from. My coaching is very, very vast, uh, is about human performance. And human performance, me, it doesn't matter necessarily whether you're an Olympic athlete, whether you're a tennis player, whether you are, are interested in grass bowls, it has no, influence to the way that you're dealt with from me. Um, likewise, if you're a business owner, what you'll find is some of the tools that I'll be giving you, yeah, so one, some of the tools that I'll be giving you will, and some of the topics covered will actually be able to be transferred over into other aspects of your business. So that's worth considering. It may, you may not find the value right now, but you'll certainly be finding value in other aspects of your life, and likely it will come through an aha moment. If you follow me, you understand what they are. So welcome to everybody. So let's have a look at some of the expectations. Just fire over some of the expectations. So what are you expecting from me today? Answers, yeah. Okay, stress reduction isn't something that's been written or I haven't got in my notes. We, it will come up, I'm sure, as one of the answers. 
Uh, I've not pre-screened these, so I am literally, everything that you hear is gonna be completely genuine. There is no research done to this. This is off the cuff uh, in a positive text, not in a negative uh, format. So everything is gonna be answered honestly right here. Okay, words of wisdom. I'll try my best. Try is not a word that I use on a particularly regular basis. Okay, keep those comments coming. Again, I'm gonna just refer back to those um, as we go through. So as I said, I've worked with people of all different business sectors, financial sectors. I work with people from house persons, full-time house persons, full-time parents, all the way up to Olympians entrepreneurs, international business owners, and people that you see on a regular basis in the media, so. Okay. Yeah, so as you know, I don't deal with off-the-shelf training products, so despite actually putting together a seven-day mindset series at the moment, everything you hear is genuinely my belief based on what I've learned over the 10, 15 years, what I've learned within my life, uh, 10, 15 years within the professional environment, and experience. And I think that is where I differentiate from a lot of other people. They've come from a sporting background into sports psychology, whereas I have uh, incorporated both, was in the military at 16, learned a lot. So a lot of my tactics, or a lot of my skills, a lot of my approaches towards things are not necessarily the conventional textbook psychology. Um, yes, yeah, I'm hard hitting. Okay, so let's crack on then. Yeah, all, everything that you see, uh, or sorry, everything that I talk about is transferable across into other sectors. So yeah, they will be relevant for you. I haven't prepped anything with regards to poker though. Are you having me on? Okay, well let's see. Anxiety, I mean yeah, anxiety, the strategies that I teach you are transferable into everything. I've said that, so let's see if it works. Okay, so I've got a list here of the questions that you um, have replied back. I've transcribed them into my book here. So let's see. Okay, so this, uh, people focus on what they see, what about what they think? Right, so for me in my world, I believe that if you are following a certain thought structure within your mind, uh, there's gonna be a lot of questions and answers involved in that. And I think for me, not for, I think, there you go, I've said it in, in my response. Uh, when people are thinking, uh, about what they're seeing, what they do as they go through a question and answering process based around their beliefs, their values, and previous experiences. So for me, in my world, it's about improving the questions and it's about challenging whether the past actually is a true representation of truth. Uh, we experience many, many things throughout life and it, we are only as good in that moment of interpreting that data based on the information that we're provided there and then. So if you're struggling with something in particular with what you're seeing on a regular basis, then I would recommend, uh, if it is something you can remove from the environment, then perhaps there's a trigger associated with that. But what I'd prefer to do is go back and reanalyze and have a look at the reasons why you're experiencing that. Uh, yeah, so understand the reasons why you're experiencing that in the first place, dealing with the root cause of the issue, understanding what it's about, and then improving the language, see if you can see it from a different angle. Uh, in my seminars, predominantly, we talk quite a lot about flipping things, so viewing it from a different perspective. It's, it's something that you can do, uh, taking just five, 10 minutes out, looking at the other side. Uh, they say there's two sides to a coin, there's two views to every angle. Um, that's absolutely true. So perhaps looking at it in a completely different way, seeing a different way of viewing it 
uh, and then really challenging your beliefs, values about that, and then working out a strategy how you can either avoid it or deal with it completely differently. If it is a physical possession, if it is an object, then remove it from your environments or perhaps even need, if you need to, remove yourself from that environment. So that's something that a lot of people don't actually think about and it is one of the most effective ways to overcome issues. Uh, if it's not something, it's a tangible item, if it's a tangible environment, it's bringing you lots of stress, anxiety, unhappiness, then remove yourself from it. So. If you're focusing on the negative, if you're focusing on the, all of the stuff that you don't want, then the likelihood is you're going to see plenty of, of it. Uh, your brain is like a heat-seeking missile, so the more that you look at something, obviously, or look to find it, the more you try to avoid it, the more you're actually giving your brain specific instructions about what you want to see. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, red bus, I talk about the red car. If you're, if I said to you now, next time that you're out, don't or avoid the temptation to look for every red car, uh, what you'll probably notice is all of the red cars, red buses, if you're in London. Have we got anyone from London? No. No, I don't think you get, no, not in North, North, North America. Okay. So, no one from London. So, if I said to you, do you know what, I liken it as well to, when you go and buy yourself a car, if you're buying from a car showroom, you don't notice everybody within that showroom uh, or everybody else that has one of those. You think it's quite unique in terms of color, model, specification. The second you drive off the forecourt uh, or out of the garage, you notice that car everywhere. Yeah, so give your, uh, give your thoughts more conscious effort, question, uh, improve the quality of the questions that you're asking, and then really focus and understand what you're focusing your efforts on. There is no difference between focusing on the positive or on the negative. So if you're focusing on the negative, then it's time to really focus uh, or utilize that, the, the mind's perfect way of dealing with things and focusing on the positive. So, so we can zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Is everyone happy with that? Okay. I've got two things going on here, so I'm going to reply. Yeah, okay. Right, the next thing that came up. Right, hydration, increasing the size of your brain. This for me is absolutely key. Uh, one of the fundamental aspects of any kind of personal development, personal improvement. Sleep, eat, hydrate. That is my mantra. Uh, the relationship that you have with yourself is very much dependent on the way, on the things that you're consuming. So if you're consuming vast amounts of sugar, then as you will know as an athlete, you're going to experience that high, you're going to experience that situation where you can only operate in that, in that space. This is more a question probably focused towards your nutritionist or your sporting professional that looks after those aspects. But for me, sleep, eat, hydrate is uh, very, very important. Getting the good quality amount of sleep is absolutely key. I can't stress this enough. If you're not hydrating and you're not eating and you're not sleeping enough, then what you're doing is you're just depriving the body's natural systems and you will fatigue very, very quickly. Uh, also to bear in mind as well your gut health. It's an area that not many people consider unless you do have a nutritionist. If you haven't tested your gut health then it's an area that you're going to have to focus on. Um, certainly an area that is absolutely uh, key again in the growth and development. If your body can't break down all of those good quality nutrients that you're feeding it then not only are you throwing money away but also you're wasting uh, the energy in, in attempting to do so. so 
uh, have a look at your gut health. Yeah, have a look at your gut health, make sure that that's working and that there is a good connection between your gut and your brain. They consider the gut as a second brain. Uh, I agree with that statement. I've met a lot of people that have got gut issues and actually uh, are unable to think uh, because they can't digest the foods effectively. They're not supporting the brain uh, well enough with the good quality nutrients. So yeah, for a more specific answer, that you'd really need to focus and speak to your nutritionist as a uh, who will give you a better breakdown of all of those factors. Okay. And correct hydration levels. That again will be something you need to speak to your nutritionist about. Um, I do have, if you've watched any of my video series, I do have some pea sticks uh, that measure your hydration levels. You can pick them up on Amazon for you know less than twenty pounds. Uh, it's important that if you are going to do them, my recommendation would be to go and speak to your doctor beforehand and get them to describe to you how to utilize them. The information can be interpreted many different ways, so be aware of that. Okay. There is no set rule. No. There's no set rule to the correct levels of hydration. Obviously, there's so many different variants that we have from climate conditions all the way through to the size, um, the size of the body, the amount of fat you're retaining, the amount of exercise. There's just too many variants. So, yeah, absolutely. So we don't. Uh, I've mentioned it in one of my videos. Yeah, I thought so. Um, so if you've seen my other videos on YouTube, you'll notice, and I talk about it as uh, we don't actually give ourselves enough awareness over the internal organs. So we generally describe our health based on emotional connection with the outside world and the physical sense, so the appearance on the outside. Very rarely do we test what's going on the inside. So on my 100 days to Ironman, my first 100 day journey, I actually documented my blood glucose levels based on the foods I was consuming and monitored those as well as doing a hydration test uh, or uh, you know your analysis test so to look at how my organs were functioning and taking in the the uh, hydration levels as well as whether there was any uh, blood in my uh, urine um, also uh, testing my bilirubin my glucose my gravity specific so my hydration and, and you know all the other aspects on there uh, my pH level. So it's something I did. I'd recommend everybody doing it, doing it for a period of seven days. So if you are new to sport or you're in kind of that mid range of amateur um, sports journey and you're going to the next level and you haven't yet installed the uh, installed a nutritionist or someone to do your or test you, then I would certainly look to or recommend to have that done understand how your body works over a seven day or 14 day period so that you can utilize that data uh, with your diet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the next, this is the next thing, feeding the brain. A lot of people don't support the brain enough. Uh, it is said that the brain consumes over 50% uh, I think it's closer to 70%, 50% of the amount of calories that you intake. So if you are starving the body, you're also starving the brain. You, everyone has had it where they haven't eaten lunch and they go a bit dizzy, uh, where they haven't hydrated themselves and they can't think clearly. That's exactly it. That is the body or the brain shutting down, going to, to uh, like a, uh, an energy saver mode. Um, so shutting down a lot of the operations. And the first thing is good quality, clear thinking. So if you're experiencing that at the moment, uh, and I think this is how to support it, um, is the question. So the question would be to, again, look at how you're supporting the brain, what you're providing it in terms of what goes in here, um, and then also releasing any stress, anxiety, and external pressures. So supporting it from within, 
um, through the consumption of good quality nutrients and then externally removing anything that is applying too much pressure. You could liken it to a vice. The outside is very much pushing in, um, the outside pushing in, cramming and squashing uh, the mind, uh, squeezing out all of the thoughts um, and internally you've got the pressure building out. So it's about creating that perfect balance between the pressure inside and the pressure outside so that on the uh, surface of things you're actually producing a harmonious connection, a good quality energy uh, from within and to without. So again, giving enough pressure to push the boundaries and to grow and develop uh, and to really move forward in a good quality direction, especially within sport, but also making sure that you're supporting it from the inside out so that you're not getting crushed. Um, yeah, it's something we all experience. It's not, uh, I'm not invincible to it. I experience pressure from the outside world. I actually look at every kind of pressure on the outside world as a representation of what's going on internally. So if I can't deal with something, then I look internally for the solution and perhaps have to change something on my own journey. It's not always the case, no, but 98% of the time it is. So here's an interesting thing. I was reading someone's blog post the other day and it really hit a nerve with me. Um, and I felt that they were attacking me because I'd written something in a comment. Uh, and listen to the words I used. I felt like they were attacking me. I felt. So it was me. Um, nothing to do with them because words have no direct tangible effect. Obviously people interpret them based on the behavior that they're experiencing at the time. So again, for example, I was in a place of uh, where the outside pressures of the day were probably outweighing the internal balance. And based on my state, my behavior at the time, I interpreted that statement that they made as a personal attack. Uh, I am trained and educated enough and know myself as well as I can in the present moment, not to react, uh, but to digest and understand how my belief, how I, uh, the reasons why it affected me in that particular way. Um, I thought about it, in actual fact it didn't. It wasn't an attack on me, it was just a representation of how I was feeling at that time and how I wasn't supporting self in the correct way based on the external pressures of that day. Um, good. Yes, yeah, so the central nervous system, the brain, everything, we are connected from the tip of our toe to the top of our head. Uh, we are connected uh, to the phalanges. We are, everything is connected. And the energy, and again, this is something that I think is particularly key and important, seems a little bit woo-woo for those um, textbooks, psychologists, textbook coaches out there, that our energy actually doesn't stop at our skin. Our energy goes beyond. Uh, if you look at someone through heat sensitive camera or night vision goggles you'll see that there is a glow that goes beyond um, and, and yeah Here's, so if you absolutely if you go to a good quality event um, like a festival or something and the energy is absolutely on it so it's vibrant really positive you're going to experience that energy as well yeah Likewise, if you're in a negative environment, have you ever been in an environment where you walk into a party and everyone's down doom and gloom and straight away you enter that state, that behavior, and you have to fight to get out of it? Yeah, it takes conscious effort. You go into an environment where everyone's happy, singing, dancing, and in that state that supports you, then there's no restriction, there's no fight. You actually just enter in your current state. Yes, uh, yeah, key. Yeah, we're connected. Okay. Okay, so I've covered this next topic, the viscosity of blood. So again, this comes back to hydration. Um, for me, it's about making sure that all of our blood flow, it's a little bit off topic slightly, making sure that all of our blood flow works perfectly well, that our motorways 
Our internal organs are fueled correctly, and the way we do that is through hydration and the consumption of good quality nutrients. So if you are, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So if you think of, think about it this way, the thicker the blood, the harder it is for your heart to work. It's going to have to work that much harder to pump pump those nutrients around the body to the brain and supply the brain with good quality oxygen uh, or oxygenated blood and good quality nutrients. Comes back to hydration. I'm not really going to continue. Yeah, you need to get it tested. You can do that by relaxing, by, t by taking deep breaths. So the question would be how to relax in those stressful times. I think, or I don't think, I know that from my clients and the ones that I work with about pre-strategy, so before events, we focus quite a large amount of time once we've dug out um, and built a good quality foundation and cleared out all the rubbish, work a lot about that pre-section, so pre-event. And it doesn't matter again whether you are an Olympic swimmer, or a show jumper or anything, a sprinter, that section before, that few minutes before an event, you want to be in the most relaxed and comfortable, most focused state possible. You don't want any negative thoughts flying through your mind that are unproductive to that moment. This can be achieved through breath, so your solar plexus, so here. Um, yeah, oxygenating the blood. Again, it goes back to it, producing a calm state, nice relaxed atmosphere. Yeah, okay, this actually answers the next thing about building foundation. So for me, building a foundation very much goes towards, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. It could be a business meeting, it can be a poker tournament. No, I haven't seen. You can also do that by resting more. Dedicated time out to taking some rest. Okay, this moves nicely on to number eight. Yeah, clear. It's absolutely key that you clear out all of the junk from the past. It's impossible. You, it's impossible to start building good quality new habits on old bad habits. Because all they're going to do is the old ones have been there longer. They've got, they're deeply rooted into uh, the past, they're deep, deeply rooted into the nervous system, they're deeply rooted into so many different factors. You, you can build on uh, rocky ground, but it's not going to be long before you start seeing the cracks. Yeah. So that can be done through rest as well. So understanding self more, having a leggy statement, working backwards, knowing what's needed, but making sure that you clear out all of the junk. Yeah, that would probably be better to be discussed in a one-to-one. -one. Okay, so let's move on. Fear, yeah. So fear is a massive factor. Um, you think about fear, fear has been with you since you learnt it. 